All right, so we can do this video one of two ways. I'll let you decide. We need to take this brand new plastic boat and go by the Coast Guard recommendation of a six horsepower motor, or we can do something much more fun. Send it. All right, so we got a new plastic boat we're gonna be playing with today. This is the Milha, Mil, Miha, Milha, Mil, something, I don't know. I'll put the link down below if you wanna go check it out, but it's it's a little plastic boat. It's like a kayak on steroids, basically. They call it a light skiff. I call it kayak on steroids, but you know, whatever. So the construction of this thing, from what I understand, is a roto molded plastic, so basically like what you would get with a kayak, but it's like completely decked out like you would for a small bass boat or skiff as they call it so it is a whopping 153 inches which is 12 feet 8 inches is that right did i do that math right no hold on wait 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yeah 8 on top it is 42 inches and across the bottom it is right at 38 inches so it does have a couple of like molded in ribs in the bottom but it's almost got like this tunnel hole kind of feel i don't know it's almost like those little bass boat pontoon boat kind of deals where you got a pontoon here one in the middle and one off to the side but it's a pretty deep recess this recess is right at six inches so you got a pretty good little tunnel in here we're gonna find out how it runs with mud motors because i don't care how it runs with anything else so we got a pretty basic layout there is a little cup holder like little bait holder thing i don't know what you would use that for but it's like a big cup that goes down in there there is some pour foam down in the bottom i'm not gonna be able to get a camera in there and show you but there is enough room to get my arm in so you could run like wires and stuff underneath there it's got a little rubber cover for the top two cup holders up front fishing rod holders right there your front compartment and for those that are going to be wondering this thing is 24 inches in the back and about nine and a half inches deep and 12 inches across in the front and they do have these little locks on them and that will keep it from flying up but it only locks on one side i really wish they would have put two on here it made it a little bit more secure but anyways these are made in brazil not in the land of egg roll so i am a little happy about that then we got two more compartments in here these are about 33 inches by 12 and three quarters or so and they are also uh, about nine and three quarters nine and a half inches deep there's another one over here that looks exactly the same does have a little bit of a drain channel and it looks like this may press up against here and give you somewhat of a watertight effect which i'm not super duper worried about also has two locks right there so you can lock the back end of these but the fronts do not lock they got three included rails up here on the front so i'm assuming that probably fits most of your normal t-track stuff get a cool little cockpit area up here i guess big enough to fit my feet in or maybe stand up and two more of these little cup holder looking thingies with the rubber covers over the top and if you look down in here you can see this thing does have the reserve buoyancy foam for the coast guard people we got two more cup holders one on each side two more rod holders one on each side more of the track over here this looks like uh like a tie down for your rod there going down the side you will notice this this is very kayaky like this is a scupper hole that's for if you get water that comes into your cockpit it will drain out this side right here now from the pictures i've seen online i haven't put this thing in the water yet the pictures i saw online this thing only drafts in like a couple of inches of water so i don't see this being an issue with water coming up this high and then you got another one of these scupper holes self bailing holes whatever you want to call it over here on this side open up this lock now this back hatch actually has a little open area that goes into the back storage area I'm not sure I'm super crazy about that, but I guess it works. It keeps it from flopping all the way over. This back hatch area is almost 31 inches by 24 and a half. And it's about that same depth, nine and nine and a half or so. Pretty big area back here. You could probably fit decent sized batteries if you needed to. There's also another little area here. Looks like it could fit like a group 29 size battery, maybe a 31. I'm not 100% sure. A little storage compartment here two grab handles one two three four rod holders in the back but my favorite part of this thing is right here all aluminum transom and it is tig welded which i'm really shocked to see this is a really really stout transom um, i looked as best as i could from the inside it feels like it has wood back behind it 
and then the aluminum on the outside and it is bolted in you also got a drain plug over here so you can drain the inside but it does not have a drain for the actual inside of the boat because it's a self bailing boat with those little scupper self bailing holes that come out the side but i'm really excited to see a boat with a really good thick transom on it this thing is 3 16th inch thick uh, as far as the material thickness tig welded front and back and looks it's pretty stout all right so one of the things that i know people are going to ask about and something i've been curious about is how strong are these lids going to be well i'm a, not a little boy and they seem to be holding my weight just fine they're not cracking or anything but they are bowing in the middle uh definitely has some movement as you can see around the edges it feels a lot more solid i don't feel any movement there it's just when i stand in this middle of this big back hatch down here in the cockpit uh, it's got a little sponginess in the floor that, that kind of kayaky feel which i'm used to because i have a kayak it doesn't really bother me and then up here these seem a lot more sturdy than that big back hatch does it does have some flex here in the middle but on the edges it seems really really sturdy and then up here to this one ooh, this one's got a this one's got one right here in the middle it's a little bit spongy so what you are about to see me do in this video is absolutely idiotic and stupid and you should probably not do what i'm fixing to do unless you just really want to this thing is rated per the coast guard the united states coast guard a very important federal agency they say that this thing can only handle two persons or 300 pounds with a total of 400 pounds of person's motor and gear. Rating is for a six horsepower motor. Now, I don't know two people that weigh 300 pounds unless you got two little midgets, but I weigh 249-ish, and we're gonna be me on this boat plus way over this weight capacity on mud motors today. All right, they said this thing weighs 175 pounds. My kayak weighs 105, and I can put it in the back of my truck by myself, but I'm gonna try it out and see. impossible not easy but it can be done probably be better to go in the bed this way first there's a good chance for me to try taking it out it's not terrible it's it's just like my kayak but heavier yeah i think with some little wheels on the back yeah you know, like those little fold down wheels would probably work great Two guys, this ain't bad at all. Ooh. Awkward. There's nothing to grab onto on the inside, really. Okay. That was not fun. I don't recommend doing it from the back. Not on this. You can do it from the back other ways, but not, you know what I mean. That's everything about the boat that you're probably gonna ask me in the comment section, so now you don't have to ask me. You're welcome. Let's see how she floats. I found this little lake on Google Maps. There's like a golf course or something over here, and there's some sign about electric something. I don't know, electric only, or I don't know. But we're gonna try this thing out. The only thing I see so far is I cannot lift the motor up very high. Kind of drag on these folks ramp right here, but it is a uh, pretty, pretty good, better than I thought it was going to be. Yep, just like a 1436 John boat. That's, that's exactly what I thought it was going to be like.
What happened? I broke the pull cord and I tried to gas. I forgot to put gas in it. Oh. Those are two requirements to run there. Yeah. Mm. It needs some go-go juice. It does. All right, here we go. Baywatch rescue. <laughs> nothing to tie on to, so I'm having to hold it. They don't have no cleats or nothing. So I learned a few things. One, make sure it's got gas. Two, you should probably replace your pull cords every, I don't know, couple years or so. Three, the Predator 212 kit from Beaver Dam did hit this thing a little bit and scratched it up. So it really needs to put the spacer that comes with the kit on top to give it a little bit more space because I think even if I did get going full speed, I wasn't gonna be able to get the prop up high enough to uh, get it up out of the water. It was pretty much, I could see about that much of the prop out of the surface of the water. So I got the other Beaver Dam kit with 420 Predator. We're gonna put it on there since this one is DOA for the rest of the day. I don't have an electric start on it and I'm not replacing pull cords today. So let's try again. I won off your boat. <laughs> Dude, when we made that turn, I was like, ah! I'm, I'm sketched out with this thing not even running. All right, so we're back out to try this again. Uh, the first time did not go so well with the Predator 212 because the cord was dry rotted, the pull cord. So that's no good. And I got a new one. So the very first thing I tried was a 100 inch shaft, which turned out to be way too long. The problem with the 100 inch shaft is on this boat, with the little tunnel holes that it has coming out the back, it creates a very odd wake that's very, very close to the boat. And the place where those two wakes meet is where you want your prop to ride or just slightly behind it. The problem on this boat was my crest where the spot where the two wakes meet was about two and a half feet behind where it really needed to be. So I swapped the 100 inch shaft for a 85 inch shaft and instantly noted a difference. With the same size prop, which what I was originally running on the 100 inch was an eight inch prop, with the exact same size prop on an 85 inch shaft, I automatically went up to 17 miles an hour, so I knew I was on the right track. It moved the prop up a lot closer to where those two wakes were meeting, and also because now I was getting more speed, 
the wake was actually moving a little bit further back away from the boat so i was on the right track but an eight inch prop was way too big it was still bogging the motor down at full rpm the other issue i had at this point was the motor was sitting way too low on the transom and it was actually contacting the back of the boat right here so i had to grab a spacer and put a spacer on the actual mounting bracket to bring the long tail up that way I could have a little bit more space to push down on the handle and get that prop up on the surface where I needed it. And that did the trick. After that, it was just a matter of playing around with prop size and ended up finding that my best speed was with a seven inch prop. And with that, I was able to run 21 miles an hour with my big old fat butt in this boat. No problem at all. Average cruising speed was around 19. I'd have to kind of like lean to one side just a little bit and sit as far forward as possible in order to get that 21 miles an hour. But average cruising speed with me just kind of playing around in the boat, sitting wherever was around 18 to 19. So now it's time to give my opinion on this little boat. My mama always said opinions are like buttholes. Everybody's got one. So if you want to hear my butthole on this boat, stick around and you're going to have to deal with the fan noise because it is hotter than two rats making babies in a wool sock out here. Overall impression of the Milha boat. It's a very good quality boat. It is a little on the expensive side, but if you compare that to what the cost of a new John boat or a new kayak, a nice kayak is these days, it's not far off. So yeah, it's more money than most people really want to spend at about 3,500 bucks. But I was just at Academy the other day, a 1436 John boat brand new is $2,000 without a trailer. And most of your really good fishing kayaks these days are in that like two to $5,000 range. So this is right in there. I like that it has the built-in decks and kind of storage areas already. That saves you from having to do a whole lot of modifications because it's kind of already in there. It's ready to go if your main goal is fishing. I was really impressed with how shallow this thing drafts. Even with me at 250 pounds and an oversized mud motor on it, most of the boat was in like an inch or two of water. I am super impressed by the welded aluminum transom on this boat. That is a super rare thing for a off the shelf boat to have a transom that good on it. And it, it held up really well. Like I would have absolutely no worries putting a 20 or 25 horse outboard on this thing and just boot scoot and boogie. Mike over at Tiny Boat Nation just did a video and he ran a 15 on it with two guys in it and was scooting along pretty good and that transom never flexed it didn't look like there was any problems with it at all all good things must come to an end so that is the end of my good list here's the things that i'm not super crazy about with this boat the first thing is the scupper holes that they built into the side if you have way too much weight in this boat like most people are going to do because that's just the nature of people they're going to try to put as much crap in a boat and take it out as possible now i'm being super picky here because it's a really simple fix go get some scupper hole plugs and just plug them in there and you don't even have to worry about it. The second thing I'm not super crazy about is this boat's a little bit difficult to get used to at first. If you're a person like me that's not super well balanced, you don't do gymnastics on the weekends, then this boat is going to take you a little bit of getting used to. It feels extremely tippy side to side and it's only because the boat is not very wide. Now, I will say this, I walked all the way to the edge of the boat and never fell in and I didn't tip over but it took me a little bit of getting used to. This boat's like really, really nimble side to side. So when you get in it for the first time and you walk around, you're gonna be like, oh my God, I wanna go over. But then once you get used to it, it, and it does take a little while, you can really move around in this boat without too much problem. Now, if you're a little fellow that's not plus size like me, or you have some pretty good balance, you're not gonna have any problems in this boat. Third and last thing I'm not super crazy about with this boat is there's really no seating options available for it. In order to put either like pedestal seat or you know one of your regular john boat style seats to where you can actually sit down and fish or you wanted to sit down and hunt out of this boat there's not anything out there so you're gonna have to make something it can be done can it be done well i don't know i haven't tried it yet i plan to at some point but for right now it's basically just a stand up or sit down on the decks and run around kind of boat. And it makes sense why it doesn't have a seating option available because it's not designed for it. It's a skip. It's made for flats fishing and stuff like that. So you've heard my nitpicky things that I didn't like. You've heard the things that I did like. What's my overall impression? On a scale of two to lava lamp, this thing definitely gets a rating of purple zebra. This is a purpose built plastic boat. It was built for a certain style of fishing. That's what it's made for. That's what it's meant to do. If you buy it for that reason, you're absolutely going to love it. It's a great little boat. If you buy this thing with the intention of using it for some other type of fishing, you may or may not like this boat. With the addition of a bow mount trolling motor and some type of pedestal seat, I can see this being a really good small lake or pond bass fishing style boat. And I definitely think it could be modified to do some other types of fishing. I just don't know if I would go out in really big water with it. Can it handle it? Yes. Will you be comfortable? Mm. 
it's really up to you some people may some people might not for hunters this boat can definitely tote whatever it is that you want to put in it i know it only has a 300 pound weight rating but i had me at 250 pounds ryan at 180 pounds plus a 200 and some odd pound 13 horsepower predator long tail on here and it floated just fine and i have no doubt that it could have handled more now it's never going to get anywhere fast but it would definitely get you there would i ever want to hunt out of this boat probably not would i use this boat to get me to a spot to hunt and back with whatever i unalived on my hunting trip yeah i probably would it will work pretty well for that now this isn't my boat I didn't buy it. I got to borrow this thing from Tiny Boat Nation with no strings attached because plastic boats are getting kind of popular and I wanted to see how a mud motor would react on one of these. And as time goes on and more and more plastic boats come out on the market, I'm gonna have to continue doing things like this because this is where things are going. The world of new small aluminum John boats is slowly but surely kind of going by the wayside and plastic is definitely taking its place. So hopefully at some point, someone will make a hunting fishing style boat that is specifically made to run mud motors on but for right now this is what we got the send it video would not be complete without some time in the haters corner i've got my hater aid so here we go if you're not familiar with the haters corner what we like to do at the end of every video is stand in a corner and see who was the most butt hurt in the comments over the last couple of videos and because we know people on the internet are super sensitive we won't use their real names we just call them scooter our first scooter commented on one of my boat build videos he wrote hey man you did the whole thing wrong in every way have a great day you know, Scooter, it's okay if you disagree with me because I can't force you to be right. And since you seem to be a person, Scooter, that does everything right, I bet you have one of those 37-point adjustable ball hitches on the back of your truck, knowing good dang well the only thing that you're pulling is foreign objects out of your rectum. Our next Scooter commented on another one of my Boatville videos. He wrote, Men weld, boys rivet. I dare you to say that to some dude holding an AK-47 that's riveted together and see how he feels about that comment always a bunch of hate when it comes to riveting versus welding you got people on both sides of the fence you now you got your chevy guys you got your ford guys and then guys like scooter who probably drink bud light and wear those tuck dresses at the sale at target our next scooter commented on my electrical video where i was apparently making too many jokes he wrote you talk too much with silly extra media just share the information well since you just want me to share information here's a piece of information you did not know if you take Phillips head screwdriver, put it into your belly button, and turn it a quarter turn counterclockwise, your butt will fall off. You're welcome. But you know, it does make me wonder, if we yawn, do deaf people think we're screaming at them? Just a thought. So our next scooter commented on one of my mud motor videos. He wrote, long tail is okay for a starter, but, but with two T's, but they're a lot of trouble. Being too long and all in all, they're a starter person dill. I gotta tell you, Scooter, I'd rather rub one out to a Reader's Digest magazine with a handful of razor wire and have to try to read that comment and make some sense out of it. I can't give him too much crap. It's probably an Alabama fan. You know, the English language and spelling and punctuation isn't exactly at the top of their priority list over there. O-R-T, you know what I say. Can't spell retard without RT. Our next scooter left me a super nice comment. He wrote, Ding dong. I don't really know how to respond to that. Cabbage toad twat waffle? Does that work, scooter? Our next scooter brought on a whole nother series of scooters, so we'll start with the first one. He writes, Still convinced that your beard is glued on. Our second scooter jumped in and said, That's offensive to say his beard is glued on when it's obviously premium Velcro. Man, I get a lot of hate about the beard, but I don't know why everybody's complaining about it. It's not fake, and even if it were, I don't know why you'd be complaining about it in the first place. Nobody complains about fake titties on a chick. Why would you be complaining about a fake beard on a dude? I swear, comments like this are about as useful as Anne Frank's drum set. <laughs> Honorable mention goes to Scooter, who wrote, Anyone that has to reinforce his manhood so often makes me wonder, dot, dot, dot. I guess that's about what we'd expect from an LSU fan, but, I mean, I'm still subscribing. <laughs> Joke all you want by LSU there, Scooter. We're going to run another national championship in the next three to seven business years. You just watch. Thanks for the comment and the sub, Scooter. I appreciate it. I'm going to take off, but before we go, one thing you should always remember. Money can't buy you happiness, but it can buy you a boat. Bye, guys.